Hey, long time no see, and uh, look at the snow here. It has arrived at the place where I live in the fjords of Norway. It's beautiful, and I have to tell you, I, uh, in this video I will talk a little bit about genetic memory. And I'll give you some examples. And I'll uh, relate to some of the, well, the research that I've been reading about it, compared to my work as a historian. And I was actually going to do a video this week, including this ship here. Uh, because I, the last video I made on this channel was about the evolution of the Viking ships. And I wanted to do a follow-up to do a follow-up on that, but uh, my computer crashed, which is actually not so um, good at the moment. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because I really wanted to talk with you about the genetic memory, and I'd like to ask you about this concept and if you have some experience. First of all, if it exists, but if you accept the premise, do you have some stories and and and? Uh, can we talk about these stories? Your own memories? Can your genes remember? And um, for me, uh, before I get into the research and stuff, for me, being on a boat, especially a wooden boat or a sailboat, and to be uh, in touch with nature and to uh, um, Especially when you have fear that fills your body because you have to steer up and down the waves and uh, and you know every little detail every small millisecond I mean you can't even think you just have to be there and feel because every action you make at any moment can be fatal for you and your crew and, and me behind steering a boat like that I've done that a few times in my life you know, when the waves go up like this and you know the weather's coming, you see the hole. I mean, you're so in touch with nature, it's in your fingertips. I've never felt more alive. And, uh, and for me, that's living, you know, when you come back ashore, you have that longing to go uh, back at sea like all sailors do. And Here's a little bit about my family story, because all the men that uh, I know of in my uh, gene genealogy going back in my family have been at sea. And we've been at sea here. From here going north, far north, I mean into the Arctic. My grandfather used to be away for months at a time. Like so many other peoples living here on the coast, for months at a time, you feel more at home with your crew, with your comitatus. For those of you who remember, I talked about the Mannerbunde. You feel more at home with them on board a ship like this than you do at home raising your kids. You can ask my father about that. He didn't know how to raise a kid. Uh, but he didn't know how to make it with his crew, you know. He went, he moved to Oslo with me, and uh, and um, and he, like so many others, he fell more in love with uh, his work, of course, and his colleagues that he was a boss and a leader for. And uh, same thing with the cold. I really, really enjoy the cold. I mean, I can survive in Brazil, and I've lived in Brazil, and then four degrees plus Celsius, no problem. Just drink water. But. You know, when it gets cold like this, when you feel the cold into your bones, oh man, that's when I'm most alive also. It's, it's something in me. So my question is, I'm, I've been reading some studies and, and it's quite fascinating. There's this thing called uh, canalization and in, in genetics, in, in epigenetics really, because I, I, I read this one study now, I'll, I'll put links down below so you can see. And it's crazy really. You find genes, uh, very, uh, the exact same genes, in many populations, both in America and in Africa, but not in between, you know, when we know the migration routes and everything. And it's really fascinating and it could be puzzling, except we know about this thing called canalization, where genes can go latent, you know, in, in dormant mode for thousands of years even. 
and it's 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 this important skill that we have as humans. Uh, our biggest skill is the, our uh, um, adaptation. We're so good at adap adaptation, and and that has something to do with the genes when we don't need them. Well, it's just stored inside of us. And uh, in this study, they con they conclude um, that. Uh, it's even neurological in our in our neural uh, it's called neural yeah yeah neural genes uh, even there you can find it stored and uh, and uh, you come to another climate another part of the globe you don't need those genes but then you venture from Siberia down into the Americas and come on the same level on the globe in the temperate climate and then these genes actually have been found in this recent study uh, both in Africa and in America at the same time, but, um, at the same uh, level, uh, latitude that is, uh, but not further up, right? Because you don't need it. Um, and my question to you is that we know um, what you experience in life can, uh, if it's extreme, you know, life altering. Um, it can affect the lives of your uh, offspring, your children, but even your grandchildren. We know this from research, you know. And I've been talking in my previous three, three videos here about genetic memory in a sense. Because you can talk about this individually, we know that, but for how long? Just two generations or like in this new study. But this is for, well, collectively, not individually. And that's what I come to in this you know, imagine these Germanic warriors or the Vikings in the Iron Age and the Viking Age surviving up north. I've been talking about these uh, Stone Age hunter genes and we know the people of Scandinavia and um, Exodus out of Scandinavia in the Bronze Age and Iron Age and up into the Middle Ages. All these people have, like me, about close to 50% of the Scandinavian hunter-gatherer DNA in ourselves. Autosomal, meaning total heritage going backwards, genetically. And so it's just a matter, um, of course, we've inherited something from them, gene-wise. And does that mean we are a very good to adapt in the mountains, in the north, in the cold? at sea when we know that the stone age people they call them stone age but they were very advanced you can see my other videos about that if you haven't and we know that they have survived at sea nine thousand years ago on boats even you know as far back as i can remember we've lost people at sea three four hundred years ago and we've been up and down, the fish go up north, you know, so we have to go into the Arctic to fetch the cod and sea mammals and then all you have to think of to survive up here. And when you leave Scandinavia, like the Vikings did, you come to a new place, like in present day France, like the Franks did, or the Alemanni, or the Germani, or these different Germanic tribes as they are called, and when you come there, you sort of refine what you have. You take what you need and what you don't need. You don't throw it away. It's stored in you. So my question to you, when uh, out here on this beautiful winter day, if you have a perception of what I'm talking about, could you please share with me? Because I have some memories too. And, and you know, savants, these uh, people who have savants syndrome, that's another good example. They clearly have great knowledge of certain things that they have never learned. For example, you know, that's, that's really peculiar. You know, mice, um, in terms of genetic memory, mice have experienced, uh, when, when exposed to fear and smell, they, they have genetic memory. We've been able to prove that, you know. I'll put some more links down below here in this video so you can read about that. And, of course, humans have some sort of this but I've been meeting early in my life so many people who talk about they've inherited um, genes or they have memories of past lives well do you have some of these memories I'd like to hear that 
And I'll tell you mine in the live stream coming up this yeah, very soon.